Chapter 14, Acids and Bases. In this section, we're going to list five general properties of aqueous acids and bases. We're going to name the binary, uh, common binary acids and oxy acids and give their chemical formulas. We're going to define acids and bases according to Arrhenius' theory of ionization. And then we're going to explain the difference between a strong and a weak acid and base. So when it comes to talking about strong, weak, and uh, non-electrolytes in solution, we need to kind of picture what's going on here. Just a reminder from a previous section, when we have a strong electrolyte, uh, we have many ions in solution many ions. Uh, this could be uh, substances that already exist as ions. They're ionic compounds and they have broken apart. Or we also learned about uh, molecular substances that also are electrolytes that will ionize and form ions in solution. So the only difference between strong electrolyte and a weak electrolyte has to do with how many ions are in solution and how many, uh, in the case of molecules, how many molecules have are left uh, whole without forming any ions. The bottom picture on the right is when we place sugar in water, none of it will ionize. So it's a non-electrolyte. So in this picture right here, we have some example acids and bases. Um, over on the left, we have uh, the acids. We have like benzoic acid, ascorbic acid, phosphoric acid, carbonic acid. The bottom two uh, are common ingredients in pop. And then um, in the middle there, it talks about citric acid and ascorbic acid. Uh, which are both found in citrus fruit. Over on the right, we have uh, those substances that are, behave as bases. And we have uh, household cleaners that contain uh, ammonia would be one example. We have sodium hydroxide, NaOH, which is common, its common name is lye, and it's used to make like lye soap. Then we have baking soda, which is the NHCO3. And then we also have antacids uh, that uh, we often use to neutralize stomach acid. So acids are identified by a set of properties that they all seem to have in common. And uh, the first uh, property is that they have a sour taste. Now, I wouldn't recommend that you put just any acid in your mouth, but there's some of these acids that are actually used in the food industry that you can put in your mouth and they do have a sour taste. Acids also will change the color of acid base indicators. So we have some organic dyes that depending on whether you put them in an acid or a base, they will actually change from one color to another uh, depending on whether it's an acid or a base that you're adding to that. And we'll talk more about that in detail later. Now, some acids will react with metals, and we call these the active metals. These are the ones that are above hydrogen in the activity series. And through a single replacement reaction, they will bump the hydrogen out of the acid and um, leaving a what we call a salt and then the hydrogen gas will bubble to the surface which we can use for whatever we need the, the hydrogen for but that's what will happen if you dropped an active metal into an acid hydrogen gas would be bubbling to the surface and uh, here's an example of barium being dropped into sulfuric acid and you can see over on the right, you have the hydrogen gas that's being given off. And then what will be left behind after you take the hydrogen off, you'll have the Ba taking the place of the hydrogen and then you have barium sulfate, which will be a salt. It's not the sodium chloride salt, it's just another kind of salt. 
Acids will react with bases to produce a salt in water, some kind of salt in water. Um, so if you were to react chemically equivalent amounts of an acid and a base, uh, these properties that we've just described before would totally go away. Uh, they wouldn't taste sour. Uh, they don't wouldn't change the, the color of an indicator, you know, those kind of things like that. And we would say that this acid has been neutralized. This is what we use when we take a, an antacid on a sour stomach. We're trying to neutralize the acid and so it'll no longer, your stomach will no longer feel sour. Okay, now the reaction of uh, an acid with a base always produces water. That's one of the products it'll always have. And then it'll produce some kind of ionic compound. And we're going to call that ionic compound a salt. It'll be made up of the um, metal ion from the base. That's the element at the front of the formula of a base, and it'll uh, be um, attached to the second ion, the polyatomic ion or anion of the acid, the thing that comes after the H. Now acids also, when dissolved in water, will conduct an electric current. And so you've probably heard of battery acid. We use that for because it does help complete a, a circuit. So it does conduct uh, an electric current. And some acids completely separate into ions when you put them into water. And so they make very strong electrolytes uh, like, with the same characteristics that we've learned earlier about electrolytes. But there are other acids that are very weak electrolytes so that when I dissolve them in water, they uh, do not conduct electric currents very well. Now let's turn to naming uh, acids. So we have binary acids, which are acids that contain only two different elements and one element is always hydrogen. And then the other element is are gonna be the more electronegative elements that are found in the upper right hand corner of your periodic table. Things like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, uh, and uh, sulfur are, is going to be another one. And uh, the ones in that halogen column are, when they react with hydrogen, we call them hydrogen halides as a, gen, as a general name for the group. And we have hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen bromide, hydrogen iodide. They're all binary acids because they only have two different kinds of elements. And in their pure form, each compound is a gas. Okay, so we're not talking about it after they're dissolved in water. Before we dissolve them in water, they are a gas. And so to make them, we have to bubble these uh, gases in water to make a solution of these hydrogen halides. And uh, these aqueous solutions of these compounds are known by their acid names. The name of a binary acid be always will begin with a prefix of hydro. So that'll be the first part of its name. Then comes the root of the second element, whatever is after the H. We're going to take the name of that element and we're going to drop the ending of it, keep just the root of it, and then it's going to be followed by a prefix, and that prefix will be an ick. So it always begins with hydro and it always ends in ick, and in between is the root of the second element uh, in its name. So here is a chart of some uh, binary acids. So if you look at HF, if we were to name it as a molecule, we would just call it hydrogen fluoride. But when it's dissolved in water, it becomes an acid and we name it accordingly. It, notice that it will now become hydro. And then the second element is fluorine. So we'll drop the ene off the end of it and put fluor. And then we said it always ends in ick. So this would be hydrofluoric acid. The next one is hydro 
and then chlorine. We drop the ending on that, and we have chloric acid. And then hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid. And the last one is hydrosulfuric acid. Okay, it's not regular sulfuric acid. It's a, it's another, just another acid. It has a name that sounds similar. Okay, so if it's not a binary acid, then we have acids that are called oxyacids. And an oxyacid is an acid that is a compound of hydrogen and oxygen. That's the name in oxyacid. It has to have oxygen in it. And then it has some other third element, and it's usually one of the nonmetals, those elements that are on the right side of the periodic table. And usually the elements in an oxyacid formula are written as one or more hydrogen atoms followed by some polyatomic anion. So, because remember, most of the polyatomic anions have oxygen in it. So, and what you learned in uh, from that uh, ion sheet is very helpful here. So, the names of the oxyacids follow a pattern, and the names of their anions are based on the names of the acid. So, if you know what the anion, the name of the anion is, it's pretty easy to name the oxyacid because it follows a pattern. Uh, so let's look at this list right here. The first one is uh, we at, over at the right, the anion is acetate. We probably would write it as C2H3O2, uh, but that's acetate. To name it uh, when we put it into uh, a solution, we're going to take the A, the A-T-E ending off of it, and we're going to replace it with an ick. So that would become acid, acetic acid. The next one is carbonate. We'll drop off the eight and put an ick, and it becomes carbonic acid. And uh, we skip down to uh, chlorate, which is about, uh, about, what, six down, five down. Uh, we have chlorate, we drop the end on it, and we call it chloric acid. Or I had, uh, let's see, nitrates, about two-thirds of the way down. Uh, we take the eight off of that, and we have it, nitric acid. Uh, or phosphate, we take the eight off, and we have phosphoric acid. Or sulfate, we take the eight off, and we have sulfuric acid. Now, I've skipped over some of those, and those are the ones whose names end in ite. And if you look at every one of those uh, anions whose name ends in ite, the name of the acid is, instead of a, an ick, we put an us, an O-U-S on the end of it. So we have hypochlorite. We take the ite off the end of it, and we have hypochlorous acid. Chlorite, we have chlorous acid. Uh, skipping down to nitrite, we have nitrous acid. Uh, sulfite is another one that you have on your sheet, second from the bottom there. Take that off and you have sulfurous acid, not sulfuric, sulfurous acid. Now we're going to switch from that and we're going to talk about what are the useful uh, acids that are used in industry. And uh, we're going to talk about their properties and how we use them um, and various things like that. So sulfuric acid, nitric acid, phosphoric acid, and hydrochloric acid, and acetic acid are what we call the most common industrial acids. Are there other acids that are used in industry, but they're not as common? Uh, the major application of each is in the manufacturing of some agricultural product and and most commonly fertilizer. Phosphoric acid is usually the second largest volume industrial acid. In other words, by volume, it's the second largest amount that we use. And then next comes nitric acid, which is the third. So let's begin with sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is the most commonly produced industrial chemical in the world. You know, we make more of it than anything else. Uh, it's used in large quantities in petroleum refining. So if you think about the uh, all these refining um, oil refineries, they use a lot of sulfuric acid there. It's also used in metallurgy for treating uh, metals. 
and uh, to prepare them for uh, some other treatment that they're going to get. And then we also use sulfuric acid in making fertilizers that farmers and uh, gardeners will use. Now, because it attracts water, uh, concentrated sulfuric acid, not dilute forms, in other words, if you got, got it the concentrated form, uh, you could dip something that was that was wet in it and the water would be removed. It's attracted uh, to the sulfuric acid. Another acid is nitric acid. It's a volatile, which means that it uh, will evaporate easily and it's unstable, which means it will decompose. And so we then put it in brown bottles. If you looked in our storeroom, you'd find a, a nitric acid stored in a brown bottle and we store it in the dark so we don't, it will, won't decompose. Nitric acid, uh, if you spill some of it on your skin, it would stain your skin yellow. Uh, you can't wash it off. You just have to wear it off. And this acid has a really strong suffocating odor in addition to staining skin. And if you get, uh, if you just leave the acid on a little bit too long, you will have a serious burn. Like if you had a, uh, you know, touch something really hot. Uh, the one thing about chemical burns, they seem to heal a bit slower than uh, burns with uh, like a fire or touching something hot. Uh, nitric acid is used in making explosives. It's also used in making rubber, plastic, dyes, and then some pharmaceutical products. Phosphoric acid um, is, the majority of it is uh, produced each year, is used for manufacturing fertilizer. That's its main use. Yes, I told you it's also found in, in pop, and we'll get that in a moment, but it's also used in making animal feed. Uh, but it, like I said, it's used in pop. It's a flavoring agent. Uh, I know that Dr. Pepper has phosphoric acid in it, in addition to the carbonic acid. And phosphoric acid also is a cleaning agent uh, that uh, the dairy industry uses to clean the milkers and, and where the milk is stored and things like that. It's also uh, used in the manufacture of detergents and uh, detergents that have phosphates in them are great at cleaning uh, soils. But uh, lately they have tried to reduce the amount of phosphates in detergents because uh, when it is gets through the sewage treatment plants and as the water eventually leaves out into the rivers and streams, uh, particularly in summer, the algae growth can be just uh, get out of hand and uh, it will suffocate the fish and things like that. And it's also used in ceramics. Hydrochloric acid is the acid that you find in your stomach. Uh, we don't manufacture it that way. Uh, we have other ways of manufacturing it. And industrially, hydrochloric acid is an important pickling of iron and steel. Pickling means to, as it says here, uh, to remove the surface impurities. So if they want to uh, paint it or uh, put some rust proofing or something like that on the, on the metal, it'll stick better and the impurities won't interfere with it. And concentrated solutions of hydrochloric acid is also uh, comes by another name that you can um, find if you go to like uh, Menards, to Lowe's or Home Depot, it's called muriatic acid. And muriatic acid uh, can be used to clean masonry. Sometimes the mortar in between bricks and blocks uh, it, that's exposed to water will take on this white powdery surface and this will uh, react with it, eat it off and make it your brick clean again. And it's also helps to uh, correct the acidity in a swimming pool so that it's the right, if it, maybe if it's not acid enough, we can add some of that to bring the acidity back up to where it's supposed to be. Acetic acid is a clear colorless and it also has a strong smell 
uh, and it's known as glacial acetic acid. The strong smell that it has is like, just imagine really strong smelling vinegar. And um, it's made through the fermentation process of malt and barley and fruit juices. Uh, like apple juices, we can use to make uh, cider vinegar. Uh, and it, the reason it's, um, they all contain acetic acid. And that's the end of this section.